You don't need any fancy schmancy AI tools to write and submit papers to Q1 journals. In fact, in this video, I will reveal a simple five-step process that allows you to write and submit your paper to a Q1 journal in just a week. The first step is to plan and block your calendar. You see, due to interruptions, an average knowledge worker, such as a PhD student or a researcher, only does real meaningful work for 2.3 hours on average every day. Email notifications, meetings, colleagues asking for support, students students, it's difficult to focus on your writing if you get interrupted so often. That's why the first thing that you have to do if you really want to write and submit a paper in a week is to plan the next seven days and block your agenda. First, break down the task of writing and submitting the paper into smaller manageable chunks or steps. For example, if your paper is roughly 7,000 words, you need to write 1,000 words every day for seven days to finish it. But if you want to have time for revising your paper, finding the right journal, then you need to speed it up. So let's say 1,500 words a day, which allows you to finish your paper in five days, spend one day correcting your paper and one day finding the right journal and submitting the paper. Now, once you divided the big task of publishing papers into smaller daily tasks, you need to block off your calendar, preferably at the same time every day and preferably in the morning. Why in the morning? Well, first of all, while we are all different, of course, research shows that mornings are much better for focused work. Second, your willpower and brain energy are simply finite. The more decisions you take during the day, the more tasks you engage in, the less cognitive energy you will have and the more difficult it will be to focus and to write your paper. Third, research also shows that after we wake up, our brains are naturally more prone to enter this elusive flow state, which is the equivalent of really being in the zone where the work just flows and your sentences are appearing on the screen one after another and you almost lose the track of time and everything becomes effortless. So start in the morning when your brain is fresh and you haven't yet depleted all the energy and brain power by engaging in other work tasks. For example, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. A nice four hour block to get your writing done and to really focus. And if you do that, you'll make amazing progress with your paper. So now pause this video, open your Google Calendar and find that time slot for writing. If you have to cancel some meetings, we'll go ahead and cancel them. If you have to postpone some of the meetings, go ahead and postpone them and let people know. If you commit to working on your paper for just four hours a day, that's already a 200% improvement in comparison to an average knowledge worker who does meaningful work for 2.3 hours on average. But what if I told you that there's actually a way to boost your productivity by an additional 400% without working more? And you do this by engineering your environment. Now you can plan all you want and block your agenda all you want, but unless your environment is engineered for focus and flow, you will get interrupted anyway and your writing is not going to be moving forward. So first, let everybody know that you will be less available for that particular week because you have to write and submit your paper to a Q1 journal. Start by putting an email autoresponder on either for the whole day or maybe just for that chunk of four hours that you schedule every day in your calendar. This will also ease your worry about not responding to emails straight away because that email autoresponder will let people know why you're not available and when you will respond to their email. And believe me, 99% of emails can wait for a few days for a response. It's not like the house is on fire. And if the house is on fire, believe me, they will find a way of contacting you even if you're not responding to emails. Second, make a short list of any key people that you need to personally let know that you're less responsive for the next seven days. This can be your boss, maybe some colleagues in the department that you're collaborating with, maybe some of your students, maybe your spouse. Then draft a quick email to let them know what you're working on this week, when you will not be available, and when you're going to respond to the inquiries, and maybe how they can reach you in case of an absolute emergency. And if you're worried that you know your colleagues, your spouse, your boss will be 
angry at you or you will miss out on some important work opportunities, trust me, we've tried it with numerous of our clients and guess what happens? Nothing. People just get used to you taking power over your own schedule and they start adapting their schedule around your agenda, not the other way around. So trust me, nothing will happen. You will not get fired and your colleagues will not get angry at you if you're less responsive for the next week. And as a bonus, you'll have your paper finished. Now, the second really big thing in terms of engineering your environment is to choose where you're going to be writing your paper for the next seven days very wisely and to engineer that place for maximum focus, maximum flow and maximum productivity. And here are just a few evidence-based tips that will allow you to do that very, very quickly. First of all, plants. Put a plant in the place where you're going to be writing your paper because research shows that live plants boost health, energy and focus. Number two, you can also use pictures of nature if you really absolutely can't get a plant because pic even just looking at pictures of nature will reduce your anxiety and increase your creative output according to many studies. Windows. Make sure you're sitting next to a window that hopefully overlooks maybe a park or you have a nice view from it because research shows that sitting next to a window boosts your interest and motivation in work and boosts your productivity and improves your sleeping patterns. Then also light, make sure that you have lots of natural light flowing in through the windows because again, research shows that natural light helps with focus and with motivation. And then desk, keep your desk tidy like this one there's nothing here the more cluttered your desk is the more cluttered your mind will be because there will always be things on your desk vying for your attention reminding you of unfinished tasks unfinished projects emails to respond to messages to write and tasks to do so make sure your desk is super tidy and super clean and there's nothing there apart from the laptop that you need to be using to write your paper now personalization Research also shows that adding a small personal touch to your desk space often increase performance and productivity by 30%. So do add maybe a picture of your family or something that makes this space where you're gonna be working on hard next seven days really personal. And now phone, keep your phone off or on airplane mode during that time block that you designated for writing. Preferably leave it somewhere else even at home, lock it somewhere so you're not tempted to use it at all. Now, you can block your agenda and engineer your environment, but unless you know what you need to do and what to write and how to structure things every single day, you're going to be staring at a blank screen for hours. And to illustrate this problem and the reason why so many PhD students and researchers stare at a blank screen and cannot write the papers fast, let me do a travel analogy. So for most of you out there, writing a new paper is like going on a different trip to a new city each time. All the sites are new, the street names are unfamiliar, you don't know where you're going or how to find the best landmarks. And you know, a trip like this might be fun and enriching, but it's also slow because you tend to get lost a lot and stare at your map on your phone or a paper map. Instead, if you want to pull off writing a paper in just seven days, it needs to feel like taking a trip to a neighborhood you've spent decades living in. You know every street corner, you know all the shortcuts, all the detours. The trip is still fun, but much, much faster. So writing a paper needs to be like the second trip, a visit to a familiar territory. In order for this to happen, you need to develop a proven template. Think of it as a map, and it needs two key elements. First of all, it should have the exact structure you need to follow in the paper. This is like the roads with the main landmarks in the city. Second, you also need the exact language that published researchers in your discipline are using to write papers for Q1 journals. This is like the names of the streets and the names of the landmarks. Once you have both, writing a paper in a week will seem almost effortless. So how do you create a proven template like this? Well, basically you have two options the time-consuming one and the easy one. The first option is to analyze 10 to 15 papers published in really good journals in your discipline. How are they structured? 
what language the researchers use for each element of the paper. Break these down into a template. And then as you write and publish your own papers, you can continue refining that template. It might take some initial work at the beginning, but it will truly pay off and skyrocket your productivity in the long run because you will have a proven template that you can use time and time again for every new paper. Now, I've also got the easy option for you. I've already done the hard work for you and I've tested and refined this template over the last five years working with over 850 PhD students and researchers. And it's going to work regardless of your field. You can download this template by going to our free community and it's pinned right at the top of the community feed and the link to join the free community is in the description to this video. So now you've got an awesome paper written, you need to find an equally awesome publishing outlet for that paper. And it's actually more difficult than you might think. An analysis of 898 rejected papers by Venon et al. showed that choosing the wrong journal was the second most common reason why editors rejected the paper out of hand. Because look, you, you cannot publish a review paper in a journal that only publishes experimental work. You cannot publish a paper that looks into the intricate structure of proteins in a journal that's primarily interested in carbohydrates. It's not that there's something wrong, intrinsically speaking, with your paper, it's just that you're trying to fit it into a journal that's just the wrong fit for that paper. And if you think that you would never ever make such a basic mistake, Think again, a lot of research shows that choosing the right journal is one of the most common reasons why papers get rejected. So how do you choose the right paper? Well, first of all, start with the reference list um, of your paper and identify five to 10 journals that appear at least twice in that reference list. Since you refer to them, they likely publish similar work to yours, which will make your paper potentially a good fit for those journals. Then go to those journals' websites, look at the About section, guidelines for authors, take a look at what types of paper they publish, what topics they're interested in, what's the target audience, what's the scope of the journal, and then try to narrow down your list to about three journals that seem like a really good fit for your paper. If all three are an equally good fit in terms of scope, make your final choice considering the impact factor. All else being equal, choose the highest impact factor journal because you can always go down in the impact factor later on. Now that you have the paper ready and you know which journal you're going to submit it to, spend the last day doing a final check. Make sure that your paper fits the journal style sheet. You can usually download a template and, and a guide for authors from the journal's website. Make sure that your paper is within the word limit. Again, something very, very simple, but something that according to reviewers and editors, many researchers overlook. Format your tables and figures accordingly. For example, some journals will want you to submit your tables and figures as separate documents rather than put them in the paper itself. And then end this day by proofreading your entire text. Make sure your text is free of basic errors such as spelling or third person S. And here are a few more proven strategies to ensure that your text is as error free as possible that will save you thousands of dollars in proofreading costs. First of all, print your text. For whatever reason, it is much easier to see mistakes on physical paper rather than on a computer screen. And then list your mistakes. Having a list of the most typical mistakes that you are prone to make will make it much easier for you to find your mistakes in the paper. Try to focus on one issue for a specific period of time. So choose one type of a recurring mistake, let's say third person S, and try to go over the paper, skim through it really quickly to find just that one issue. You also want to prioritize the mistakes, especially since we're trying to submit the paper in just a week. What I mean by that is that you want to focus on mistakes that are recurring the most frequently in your text and mistakes that have the biggest impact on the readability of your paper, which usually is things like coherent flow, ensuring that all the sections are structured appropriately and so on. Now, an easy way to speed things up further is to use word find and replace functions that allow you to 
find specific words, specific mistakes and replace them with other ones, which can automate some basic mistakes. You might also want to try reading your paper aloud. Of course, you're not going to read all eight or 10,000 words aloud, but you can read certain sections that you're most preoccupied with in terms of mistakes. Reading things aloud will allow you to hear the mistakes that you can no longer see. And finally, you can also ask for help. A fresh pair of eyes can really do wonders in terms of finding the mistakes. And look, probably nobody will have time to read your entire paper in just a couple of hours, but you can give one paragraph or one page to a colleague and get them to read it. Because even if it's just one page, they'll be able to spot one or two mistakes which might turn out to be recurring problems in your papers, which then you can really fixed and which you haven't been able to see yet. And if at this stage you want to go with some technology, I would really recommend you use PaperPal's editing feature. It will spot some of the most common mistakes, proofread your text, and it will also do as good a job as an average proofreader does for the fraction of the price. It's only nine USD a month, probably less than you spend on coffee a week. And you can also get a 20% discount if you use PAP20 discount code that's in the description right below. So this is how you write and submit a paper to a Q1 journal in just a week. However, if you want to publish papers regularly, become an authority in your field, advance your academic career, such weekly sprints just simply aren't viable long term. They'll burn you out, they'll stress you and you'll feel overwhelmed. So instead, what you need is a proven process and a proven system that allows you to write and publish Q1 papers regularly without having to do so such stressful weekly sprints. And this next video shows you exactly what I would do to publish three papers this year. So watch it next.